Welcome back to Carnadies.org. Today we're going to be continuing with our series, Dumbfounding Definitions, Dizzying Distinctions, and Diabolical Doctrines, a series sorting through some of the jargon of philosophy. In this video we're going to be looking at what is a rigid designator. Now, rigid designators are a term in the philosophy of language first introduced by Saul Kripke. Rigid designators refer to the same object in all possible worlds where that object exists. So if Saul Kripke was a philosopher in this world, but a wizard in another world, and a lawyer in another world, Saul Kripke, his name, would refer to all of those different objects, despite them having slightly different properties. These are contrasted with non-rigid designators, which may pick out different objects across possible worlds. So names such as Barack Obama or the Earth are generally considered to be rigid designators, while definite descriptions such as the 44th president of the United States or the third planet from the sun may pick out different objects in different possible worlds, and so are often non-rigid designators. Note that there are parts of those definite descriptions that do rigidly designate things. The United States is going to be a rigid designator because it's a name. The sun is a name of a particular star. Once again, going to be a rigid designator. But the full statement, the 44th president of the United States, isn't going to be a rigid designator because it's not going to pick out the same individual across possible worlds. There's another possible world where someone else is the 44th president of the United States. There's another possible world where there's a different planet that's third from the sun other than the Earth. Here are some definite descriptions, such as the predecessor of three, which are rigid designators, because they pick out the same object, namely the number two in all possible worlds. So just because something is a definite description, it doesn't imply that it's a non-rigid designator. However, usually these are only going to occur in situations where you have mathematical or logical truths that are going to be themselves true across all possible worlds and not going to be contingent in some way. Check out my video on Kripke's semantics for a more in-depth look into Kripke's theories of modality. And stay tuned for a future video looking at Kripke's use of rigid designators to argue for contingent a priori statements. Do you think there are any cases that Kripke's distinction can't handle? Are there any names that are non-rigid designators? Write your answers in the comments below. Watch this video and more here at Carnades.org and stay skeptical, everybody.